a coalition here that uh, is bringing together and bringing us together to to make sure we we uh, take the Senate. Today we have some very special folks on uh, that Charles will be bringing on. Charles is the uh, com a commissioner and and. Georgia, who has just quite frankly been a great on the grounds leader and partner with us. So we've have a couple of major issues I always start off in the front so people can stay focused. One, uh, the DNC and other folks are, are reminding us that we need to one, raise money. Uh, that is the number one issue to make sure we overcome the uh, financial hurdles that the uh, Republican opposition is putting out there too. We have a deadline of December the 5th for people to register and vote and make sure that people are involved in voting uh, and make sure that we get that done. And, and three, we've got to have the uh, phone banking. But uh, so we can honor everybody's time and give Charles the time he needs. He's put together what I think is a dynamic virtual online um, fundraiser. Um, Charles, I would like for you to go ahead and speak um, and speak to that particular event. Charles Russo, Commissioner, go right ahead. Thank you kindly. And uh, let me first start off to echo the sentiments that Christine mentioned with respect to uh, Happy Thanksgiving to uh, everyone on the call. And sincerely hope that you and your families are staying safe uh, in the midst of this uh, virus. Uh, let me correct one thing, the seventh, I think Harry, you might've said the fifth is the last day to register. And uh, I can't take credit for uh, the online concert that's being uh, planned. I mentioned it to you during the last session that we were together and it has uh, uh, come together a little bit more. We have been in communication with the Warnock campaign and joining me today are uh, Grammy award winning uh, jazz artist, Kurt Elling, his uh, friend and uh, engineer and producer and coordinator uh, Brian Farina, and uh, my colleague from college, Michael Hayes, may be on the line. Uh, to not belabor the point, basically to reiterate what I talked about last meeting was, uh, we are in the midst of putting together a online fundraising jazz concert with such notables as I mentioned, Kurt Elling, Branford Marcellus, and others who are uh, trickling in, coming on board, and we are going to do an online fundraising concert for the holidays season in order to galvanize, energize, and promote the two candidates here in Georgia, Reverend Warf, Ra, excuse me, Raphael Warnock and John Alsop. Uh, I don't have to tell the people who are assembled here this morning, this afternoon, about the importance of trying to gain control of the Senate so that we can give the Biden-Harris administration something to work with. Uh, to give some shape to that, Kurt uh, can speak directly, but it will be a fundraiser of sort, approximately $20 for people to sign on. That's the Divine Nine. That's the Democratic parties around the country in each county and each state <clears throat> reaching out to various uh, uh, civic, business, and the like organizations who want to donate and get online and participate in this concert. With that, and being respectful of your time, I won't go any further, but I'll certainly say to uh, Kurt or to Brian, uh, you can give additional shape to that, introduce yourselves briefly, and then uh, we'll go from there, if that's okay with you, Mr. Thomas. That's great. Charles, can I just add this? Absolutely. Quick go ahead, Chris. Just a quick question, Charles. For some of, a lot of the people on this call, we're all over the country. Can uh, some of us represent the ethnic American engagement com the community? Others, of course, the DC Democratic State Party. Um, we would have, can we get our own links in terms of how that money comes funnels through when we do our fundraising outreach? So we have kind of a, we can track what's coming in from our each respective communities. But that's something we, I just want to throw out on the table. I'll certainly jot that down. One of the things that we have remaining, Christine, I'm glad you mentioned that, is we're going to be in communication with the Warnock and Alsoff campaign because we have some federal fundraising guidelines. Right. Kurt Bramford and the artists are world renowned. We have to be cognizant and cautious of dollars coming in from out of the country. Mm -hmm. So we're working on those okay. kinds of dynamics okay. to be able to segregate and okay. uh, deal with Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. Kurt, Kurt or Brian, if, if, if you would, you can just introduce yourself and give a brief uh, overview of the efforts that you're undertaking and we'll go from there. Uh, thank you, Charles. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm Kurt Elling. Um, happy to have a little guest spot here on the call. I don't want to belabor the point. Um, 
uh, thanks to uh, my connection, uh, increasing connection to Charles uh, through Michael Hayes, who may or may not be on the call at this point. Um, I volunteered to uh, start to create an online, uh, an online uh, concert for the campaigns. And uh, I've been able to land uh, any number of very, very high profile jazz musicians in a short amount of time. The response, if anything, the problem is not gonna be to get people to participate. It's gonna be to limit the number so that we don't suddenly have a three hour concert on our hands with uh, occasional uh, interruptions of a creative kind from the candidates and from uh, appropriate uh, speakers in order to galvanize enthusiasm and raise additional funds. Uh, Charles mentioned that we're proposing a $20 ticket price for the premiere event, but following that, we have ideas for, if you will, giving contests uh, between members of the Divine Nine, maybe joyfully, uh, playfully pitting one fraternity and sorority against another. Hey, Alphas, where are you? These cats are beating you. Uh, we've only seen so you know so many people from such and so. We need to see you now. Um, we're talking about a premiere that would happen December the 18th, uh, and that would be the ticketed event. And then we would be able to continue to run uh, the event uh, in continuous rotation on Facebook and continue to gather. We've seen it in our experience that uh, if you ticket an event up front and you give people a reason to show up to a live event, you'll get a certain number of people that'll be very strong. But that following that premiere, when everything is pre recorded and people know about it, there are still many, many people who want to see that event and will want to contribute to the event. They just won't want to pay the $20 up front, or maybe their timing doesn't work out. Following that, people can share it as much as they want getting us higher and broader visibility. Um, I'm reaching out to uh, Vanessa Williams uh, to be a co-host. Uh, at this point, Branford Marcellus, as Charles mentioned, is definitely gonna play uh, Danilo Perez, uh, Miguel Zinan, Cecile McLaurin Salvant uh, is a singer friend of mine who just won a genius grant uh, this last round. John and Gerald Clayton, uh, and then I have a couple of special guests who are uh, from Georgia, who are known uh, jazz uh, musicians, Liz Wright and Kenny Banks, Jr. and Sr. I'm also reaching out through close association to Pat Metheny and Herbie Hancock in hopes that they might be able to contribute a track. All the music will be pre-recorded for the convenience of the artists and for the ease of presentation. We're hoping to have special appearances pre-recorded or otherwise from the candidates themselves. I know that that'll make a big difference. I'm reaching out through back channels here in Chicago to uh, friends who may or may not be able to have uh, uh, President Obama uh, give a pre-recorded message. Uh, I, Charles is reaching out to a couple of other people who he has much tighter contacts with. I can also get us to Dick Durbin, the Senator from Illinois if it seems like that's a thing, you know, he can say how important it will be to have control of the Senate, give appropriate kinds of comments and try to raise further money. Um, perhaps we could even get a Stacey Abrams to make a special guest appearance. These are all things that we can intersperse to raise awareness and to really energize the concert. So uh, if anybody has questions, I'm happy to answer them, but I don't want to belabor the point. It's going to be a great concert, and we've already had a couple of submissions from artist friends uh, come in. So that's where it stands from us. Uh, this, this is, uh, could I make a comment? This is Vitas Matsunas. I'm with the Lithuanian Americans. Um, I just want to throw it out there as, as one thing that came to my mind. As we try to incorporate the ethnics into this uh, into this. Um, uh, into this pr uh, process. What, you know, I just thought of the idea, it would be fantastic if we could include into the concert, let's say a one, one and a half minute performance by different ethnic groups, you know, sparse throughout the concert. And I wouldn't have to be long, they would be super professional, but you would emphasize that these are ethnic performers. It could be folk, it could be, it would fit right into the message and it would really help us, I think, 
excite the ethnic base that is outside of Georgia to participate in something like this? Uh, that's a great idea, but I don't know what list I would start with to start contacting people. If you if uh, if yeah, we, you have a list of uh, likely artists, I, I want to uh, suggest uh, we could make it easy for you. I Detox, provide hold on, you. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Let me just yeah. do it this way, so we can get through the particulars that we have right now. I want you and Christine to kind of caucus and put that formula together. And then we will insert it in that if that's all right with you, because I want to just make sure yeah, we respect another 30. Right. Uh, yeah, right. Right. Yeah, Vitas, uh, I can work with you and we can put that list together. And anybody else that has ideas from our, you know, from the community. Yeah, that wouldn't be a problem. Good. It wouldn't be a problem. I agree. Go okay. ahead. All right. Okay. Do that okay. for Thank me you, and forward it to uh, Harry and then I'll coordinate great. with uh, Kurt. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, great. Thanks, right. Charles. Other questions? Anyone who wants to raise it, please do. It's open mic. I know a lot of Zoom calls don't do it that way, but I, I try not to censor people. So um, anybody got any other points they'd like to make? Um, and then while you're waiting for points, one of the things we talked about, Charles, is just making sure that, for example, in those video messages, that, for example, our state and local people do some kind of small appropriate piece that shows, you know, we're, we're raising our base and doing whatever else. And so that's something that easy tie in, I think, that we will be looking at doing. Uh, right, I know okay. that would be that and others okay. on the call. Uh, go right um, ahead. Harry, uh, go Charles, and uh, Kurt. Uh, Steve Urkabina, president of a national Croatian American group. And I know where St. Peter, Minnesota is, Kurt, uh, being from White Bear Lake, Minnesota. We have, um, as Chris knows, like we have 400 ethnic leaders that supported Biden. And uh, we'll go back to Elvier and Philippe, just make sure we have that list. We have like 3,500, 4,000 nationwide. So Chris, we have to make sure that we have access to that Biden list and that we invite all our ethnic activists who helped yep. us participate in this past campaign. Yep, could be great. Thank you, Steve. That's a lot uh, of that, go ahead thanks, and open your mic and speak up, Claire. Thank you, sir. That's a great idea. And thanks, Steve, and appreciate all the work you do. Um, Claudette, please. Uh, Chris, thanks. Um, I Chris, have a couple. Hold Chris, on, can I tell you what the African diaspora community is doing? Excuse me, yeah. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I've called on Chris, so wait, please, and let uh, I mean Claudette speak, and then you're next in the queue. Claudette, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, just a couple questions. So, is the event called? What is the event called? And then, like, is it the not? Is it the Divine Nine that's hosting it? And also, no. are the links that we're using to fundraise, are they the direct links to, to, the, to the organization? So if we're, if we're sending $20 to attend the concert, where is that money going if it's not going directly to the campaigns? Let me answer your three questions. I think I heard Claudette. One, the monies will go directly to the campaign. The links will be shared with everyone so that they can pre-register, get online. Um, <clears throat> the tentative name of it is uh, 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 Blue Jazz Blues for Georgia. Uh, Kurt, it's, it's I know the the name we're working with at this point is Blue Holiday, Blue. a jazz concert for unity. What we found in the past is if that it can be a little bit difficult with to 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 get publicity from non-politically oriented uh, uh, things like Jazz Times or Downbeat or places like that, if you say right up front, this is for the Warnock Asaf campaigns, if you just say a concert for unity or a concert for America or something like that, then we can specify below that what it's for. So we're going at this point with Blue Holiday colon, a jazz concert for unity. Uh, Claudette, did that cover you? And uh, Kurt, I just want to say I understand fully um, that process with the creative community because it's a little different in dealing with creative minds when you're trying to raise money for these efforts. So uh, us political people, Claudette is our Democratic Executive Director for the D.C. Democratic State Committee. And so we just want to make sure that we're in line with what we're doing. And so Claudette, did that kind of answer what you needed? Yeah, who's hosting the event? What organization is actually hosting it? Well, it's a combination. Um, it's, it's actually the artists themselves that are hosting it, and Kurt Elling will be the uh, primary point of contact. Mm -hmm. Thank you. When is this supposed to be? The 18th 
of December. 18th of December. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Correct. Um, we have enough time to promote it? We yeah. have no choice but to have enough time to promote it. And I think that's <laughs> why we're having this call, uh, because this is what we call the boots on the ground battle call, because yeah. we have to combat everything that's coming into that state from other outside sources to overturn these two great Democratic um, candidates that we have. So we have to think in times and in, 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 in the point of just, you know, it's the fourth quarter. Five seconds left in the game, we got to score. And that's just the way I'm going to put it to everybody because, uh, you know, I think that's why your guys are on this call. I think with the coalitions we have here, uh, we can make it happen um, and uh, re and do our goals and make it worthwhile. Christine, you had somebody else you know, that was trying to make yes, it. Yes, I thought Philomena Desmond representing the African diaspora community. Philomena, did you want to say something? Uh, yeah, good afternoon, everybody. I'm calling from Woodbridge, Virginia. I'm the co-chair of African diaspora for Biden. I will tell you what we are doing in Georgia. Uh, we have people on ground. We created a Google Doc and had people on ground there that are helping with Inse Ufot. I'm sure you all know her, registering people to vote. But the big thing we are doing, we're organizing a visa for the two candidates with Nigerian healthcare professionals, that is, uh, Nigerian Doctors Association, which is the largest, uh, Nigeria has the largest healthcare association, ethnic here, the Nurses Association of Nigeria, the pharmacists, and all the Nigerians in uh, Georgia, because Nigerians have the largest population in Georgia, and most of them are in those two counties that have large population. Okay, uh, so what, okay. what I want to do, so we don't uh, I'm going to stay on point, but where we are right now is if you could, with Christine, coordinate yeah. and we yeah. lock yeah. in because we have a voter registration piece that we'll share with what you. Uh, uh, we can, with the, yeah. the two people from Georgia so that they can work with them also because we plan to do like fundraisers. Okay. So yeah, what we do is Christine is going to follow up with you directly yeah. after. Oh, so we can get that piece in. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll follow up with you after the call. Participate in the in the okay. election vote. Yeah, Philomena, I'll follow up with Phil. Yeah, I'll fill, I'll follow up with you, and we can coordinate all this national effort. That's great. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, Charles, back to you. That's it. I'll just use this final opportunity to thank you all once again to let you know we are continuing to register uh, people up until that December the 7th deadline. Uh, we are targeting specific groups, more particular those young people who are 17 and will turn 18 before the uh, January the 5th uh, actual voting time. Uh, that has been a, an ongoing success for new voters who are energized by the prospect of uh, sending two people from the state of Georgia to the US Senate and creating a different uh, paradigm shift and balance. Uh, been in communication, continuing with uh, others. We have some dynamics that we still have to, uh, logistics that we still have to lock in. And I will certainly share those with Harry and he can put them out on your site with the who, what, where, when. Uh, particularly our issues have to do with the financing of this with respect to uh, being in compliance with the federal guidelines. Mm -hmm. The concert will take place. Uh, and we are uh, remain very hopeful after conversations with the campaigns that they will give us pieces or appear live and uh, bless the effort uh, wholeheartedly uh, uh, on the uh, 18th of December. So again, thank you very, very much. Unless there's some specific, Harry or Christine or others, mm -hmm. I, I'm, happy, I'm happy to respond, but uh, that's the generic overview of what we're in the process of uh, doing. Absolutely, and so what I'll ask everybody to do is so we all have a, a playbook is that respectively follow back up if you're from the ethnic caucus, direct and follow the call with Christine so we can take all those pieces and, and shape them and give them back to Charles. The other groups that are on the call can follow through us and we will make sure we get that there. What we're gonna be doing is through the blog on our We Won't Mute uh, the Georgia vote piece that we're doing is going to be putting blogs and stuff up and like that as an informational piece to share. 
but we also are very cognizant of uh, coordinating with um, the uh, what I call traditional um, folks, which are the party structure and other things. And that's why now Christine is going to introduce uh, Claudette so she can talk a little bit about what our folks have done. Uh, the next phase of that in OT, what I'm going to do, OT Russell is our on the ground person that's working with returning citizens and families of of those who were formerly incarcerated and dis different franchise people. And since we've gone over our time, we won't go into that piece today, but we'll cut, cut into it. So, uh, Christine, bring on yeah, sure. uh, Claude. Well, the, yeah, sure. That's, it's really a pleasure and honor to, to introduce one of our really superstars here in Washington, D.C., who I've come to really admire. Um, that's Claudette David, who is our executive director of the D.C. Democratic State Committee. And she's done an amazing job. And um, I'm just thrilled that we have her. Um, so Claudette, you have the stage. Thanks for, thanks for having me on. Um, so I just, I just wanna give just folks just an update on just the stuff that we have been talking about. And, you know, one thing specifically is, I mean, and you know, this is, this is a wonderful idea because we, we have been talking about, you know, how we fundraise for the candidates um, and make sure that the candidates have the money and or fundraise for the Georgia Democratic Party um, as well, because we know that the Republicans are out, are out, fun, uh, they are out fundraising um, the Dems in Georgia. Um, so thanks for this opportunity. Uh, so I'll just uh, follow up with that because we, we wanted to figure out just how to include other state parties as well. So this seems like an easy, this seems like an easy way to, to do this. I just sharing the link with them and saying what they want to do. The only issue is that I can see them wanting to include something in the event. And I understand you don't want to make it longer than it is. So it just sounds like a couple of events may follow after this, but this seems like it will set the standard for what a great fundraiser will be. Thank you, Claudette. Claudette. Yes, Claudette. Um, so the other part about this is that we want to make sure that we are focused on, and thanks, Charles, for the correction, to December the 7th. I don't know how I forget that because I always tie it into Pearl Harbor Day. You know, I don't know how I went to the 5th. <laughs> but uh, I want to make sure that uh, we have um, we have on the line, I think, Judy. Uh, I don't know if uh, Judy is, and I think I saw Ms. Brave Boy. We've sent them some stuff on starting our virtual phone banking. Uh, and thanks to Claudette, we're trying to um, tie that in with some stuff. So I want to make sure that, uh, Judy, you want to speak to that or well, uh, he should be speaking to it or Charles, whichever one of you three want to do it. We want to thank them. They're heading up our Divine Nine Plus uh, aspect of this and doing what we need to do. Um, so go ahead, Which, whichever one of you want to speak up. Well, yes, I know Ms. Brave Boy is on the call. Um, I did have a, a preliminary question, excuse me, a preliminary question for... Um, for Harry, I wanted to know, um, I, I understand that the the artist will essentially be the host for the concert, um, but by and between the coalition of folks that we have on the call, um, would it be possible to have um, some sort of logo or, you know, um, mm -hmm. representation on the flyer? So that way we can obviously promote um, and solicit right. contributions and financial support, uh, you know, by and between our respective bases. Um, you know, Team Brave Boy here in Prince George's County, State Attorney has a very large, um, expansive platform, and we definitely want to be able to push and promote this event in addition to obviously the uh, virtual phone banking that we're planning. Yeah, that'd be okay. great. Yeah, yeah. If that's it, going to happen. And to, a couple of things I'm going to say to you also is, as you heard me mention, we want to have some kind of video messaging. And I think it will be it, because of the broad based coalition, and we are so closely combined here in the DMV, we will probably include some kind of video messaging that we hope can fold into that, um, as well as uh, as that performance is going on. So our constituent basis will see, you know, our involvement and in that we really have we really are a team in this effort. So um, the branding will be fine. We will brand it through the site that we have. Get information out to you all, all you guys, uh, and make sure that happens. Uh, Miss Brave Boy, did you want to speak to anything, or are you able to, or Calvin? Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm I'm here. So thank you. Thank you all so much. This is so exciting. I'm like pumped. I, I wish this concert was tomorrow. I think we could <laughs> blow it up. <laughs> I, I think it's going to go viral as soon as we start promoting it. So I'm really excited about it. So thank you all so much for including us. And uh, Mr. Ellis, I, I feel like I need to connect with you. You you seem to have all the connections from Mr. <laughs> Elling. Sorry. Uh, so we will be in touch with you for sure. <laughs> um, but but um but look so so you know we are a grassroots campaign we run, we have, we run have I've run grassroots ever since I was a delegate and so we know phone banking is a big part of that effort um I did a lot of phone banking I was the co-chair for um women for Biden Maryland and we did just I, I think at least 60 or 70 phone banks during that time. So we will, you know, our team will certainly help to lead phone banks. Um, we can reach out to all of the Divine Nine. Um, I'm a member, obviously, of Sigma Gamma Rho sorority, but I have all, like, I have relationships with all of the sororities and fraternities, and I can even ask my national um, officers to reach out to the national officers for the other organizations. Um, they, now, they can't do it in the name of the organization, but they can you know, through their channels, uh, reach out to their, uh, you know, th their membership. So um, we can we can talk about that a little bit. But I know that we're going to get started with phone banking as soon as we're able to. Um, I know that Tony Perry, who's on the line, who some of you might know, she used to be the deputy director of, of corrections out there in D.C., but she now works for me. And, uh, um, but she also is a big part of my campaign team as well. She um, helped to organize and run phone banks for my campaign so she's on the line to listen in and uh, she will also assist us with setting up the phone banks um, the only question I have is how will the phone banking go because in um, with the Biden campaign uh, we were able to basically just log in to a website and the calls were made virtually really for us all we were all we would do is if someone picked up, we would then speak to that person. And so it was easier to get people to do that because they didn't have to call from their own phones. It was, everything was done virtually. So I don't know what type of system um, the campaigns in Georgia have, if it's gonna be a similar system or if we're gonna have lists where people have to call from those lists. So if so, someone can help I me with that. To, Harry, yeah, this is Tony. Yeah. Hi. I, you hey, talk about Tony. Tony. This is, I used to work with Harry's dad down at the council a <laughs> hundred years ago. Um, so that's the question I was going to ask. Thank you, Aisha, for asking that because I, I did phone banking and phone bank training for the Biden campaign, the millions of calls that we did, some of them to Georgia. Um, so are you all going to be um, you being able to use the dim dialer or the dim dialer system? That's the system that Aisha is talking about is the dim dialer and the dim dollar junior that we use at the end of the campaign, which is the shorter, that has a shorter script. Right. Is this team going to be able to use that same system to do the phone so, banking? So here's, here's where we are. Charles has sent me some information and so right. I can keep on focus. Uh, we're using something called um, Flip the West and Commit to Flip Blue, as well okay. as the other apparatuses. And as you know, that's an online-based system that we can also do text as well as the uh, email piece, I mean, the phone banking piece. And so what we're going to do is what I propose to this group is to try and focus our efforts on a Friday and Saturday kind of general call days for our groups mm -hmm. to kind of coordinate and make sure our people so we can stay focused on maybe those two days and have people doing it. Um, and then what will happen is they, there's also virtual training, as you know, uh, that can be set up if we want to do a training session, tailorize the messaging and all of that stuff. So it's going to be the way you just described it. So we are on point with that. And that was one of the big things I talked to Claudette about because we don't want to have uh, non mediums that the parties and other folks aren't using. One of the nuances we want to add, however, is uh, Commissioner Russo has provided us with some of the one of the issues they're worried about in Georgia is that um, the urban areas are getting most of the attention and a lot of the uh, rural communities and, 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 and other uh, Democratic state parties are not getting the financial and other support that they need. And so what we want to do is try to target those party lists and say, 
this these are the areas we're targeting for this day in those particular um, counties that they that and work with those county people, because one of the clear messages that has been sent by the campaign is that we need to let the boots on the ground in Georgia lead the effort because there's been a lot of um, what has been called. Um, I guess derogatory statements about us coming in and they tried to say voter fraud was happening because people were going into the state and registering to vote in that election. So we need to play play through the dynamics of that. But I hope that answered the answered the question, Charles. Did I miss anything? No, you covered it well. Thank you. Uh, it will also block out the numbers so they can use their phones, but it won't be traceable back to the individuals just for you know comfort and security sake. Uh, and uh, I'll elaborate just a little bit more. Those urban counties, uh, those, uh, excuse me, rural counties is where we're going to have to really, really push the uh, get out the vote effort and help them, uh, the county parties in the rural parts of Georgia, uh, motivate their people and come back out for this special election. Okay, great. Okay, when will the phone bank be available so that, because, you know, we, I mean, we can start promoting it and we can, right. we can start that holding phone banks immediately. So, so I was proposing, I was proposing this Sunday as a kickoff. If you don't want to do it, do we can figure it out for next, the end of next week. You tell me what day works for you and we want to gear up. I propose starting well, I, this. I don't know. I don't know if, I mean, this is holiday weekend. <laughs> I don't right. know if Sunday's a good day for people. And okay. I think I would need a little bit more lead time to be quite honest yeah, with you. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think what I would need to do, um, the way we did it before is that mm -hmm. I knew what the, what, what the, 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 the what the technology was that we were using and that you know a couple of us would get trained on that technology so um what we did was kind of like uh, i guess we call we called them kind of like happy hours right so we would bring everyone on everyone could have their favorite drink or just come on board you know with whatever and then we would explain you know well we would have someone kind of, you know, just get them motivated, whether it was myself or, or another election official, whatever. And then we would explain the process, how the calls were going to be made. So I think a couple of us would at least need to know, I know Tony would like to know, I would like to know how, what the technology is, what is it going to require us to do? Can we do it virtually? Do we have to use our phones? We need to know all of that so we can explain all of that to those who are going to participate. Absolutely. And then what they do is we, we say, okay, we're going to phone bank for an hour or two hours or however long we're going to phone bank. And then we all then come back together after the vote, the phone bank to let everyone eat, to let each other know how it went. So it gets people motivated to want to come back again and do it. Um, so that, that process worked out really, really well, but we, some of us need to get trained before the actual phone day. Mm -hmm. Could I jump in on that comment here? The one thing I would love to be able to do is to bring, I, my understanding is we're trying to get the group, our individual groups to do the phone banking. So our group leader should be the one that's familiar right. with the technology then could, do, so maybe you need to bring in all the group leaders to mm -hmm. educate them so that then we can right. bring our own sources in. Right. Well, right. You are all the leaders, and I'm gonna follow my lead from uh, my leader, Miss Brave Boy. You tell me what day you want the training set up, and then we will send out a blast to both groups and have as many folks on there. We'll coordinate with Claudette as well and make sure. Yeah, I don't. I don't mind the training on Sunday. I just don't think I could, yeah. you know, advertise yeah. to get a phone back up. But okay. the training is fine for Sunday. Perfect. I echo that. Let's do that sooner than later. Training. Well, yeah, and, and we, we're we're actually just going to see because there, there's. For the DC Democratic Party, like there, there's multiple phone banking and text banking. Cause I, don't, and I know the, the Georgia party does phone banking and the actual campaigns do their phone banking. So we're, we're going to look into what we're going to actually use for phone banking, actually. So what yeah, we'll but do sometimes the campaign itself has an actual phone banking mechanism that the yeah. campaign so the yeah. Biden campaign had its own way of phone banking and what we would do is we would just dial into that and if there's something similar to that for these Georgia races we would love to to know that because we would just dial into whatever they're already using so that's exactly the platform that uh, Commissioner Russo gave me the flip the blue mm -hmm. is, is that piece that they're using I will send that information out we'll set up a training um I'd say around about six o'clock for um, Sunday. Is that work for everybody? Yep. Uh, yeah. 
six o'clock time for Sunday. I will send the uh, background information on the Flip Blue uh, phone banking. Uh, I think Miss Brave Boy and I don't claw that. I think I sent it to you. I sent that brief overview of the uh, sheet for Flip the Blue in a photo, but I will make sure you have a, a more complete um, information packet on what that means for us to use. Yeah. So and Harry, you, Harry, you'll yes. make sure you get it out to all the ethnic leaders, right? Ethnic I'm, no, I'm sure. not. You are. Okay, I'll do that. Okay, I'll do that. I'll do that. <laughs> well, right, no, I'm going to let you stay. I'm going to let you stay in your lane. And, you know, I, <laughs> I, I, I can my lane. Oh, you got to catch the pass, baby. Okay. <laughs> so right. uh, the other thing about that, if anybody misses anything on this, I will always post and send out through our site. I, I turn this, um, this is recorded. So we put it into a uh, YouTube thing and you can pull it up on YouTube. So everybody can then go back over this and hear some of the conversations or pieces you may, you missed in this um, call. Um, so, Harry, Harry what ahead. I'll attempt to do, and I, I put emphasis on attempt to do, I'll see if I can uh, get somebody from next Wednesday's call from the actual campaign to That's clarify great. some issues. Uh, and so I'll work on that effort. Okay. That's great. So that'll be for the next, we'll have that. And so that way, when we do our launch, that'll be our follow-up to our training. Uh, I can set up an online training system. I actually reached out to Flip Blue and told them that I wanted them to give us a portal so we could be kind of connected. And so you can follow your people and know who signed up, who's doing it, and do the things you just said, Ms. Brave Boy uh, and Tony. Uh, so Harry, we're good to I, go, can I think. I say, can, I, can I make one statement? So the massive, um, the, to do it on a large scale that we do, what Ms. Brave Boy was talking about is, for instance, you have the Zoom room. So if you're recruiting people constantly, when you have a schedule of when the, when the, when the, um, the um, phone banks are going, people sign up for it. They come into a main room because some people will have already, first you train trainers who then do the training with people who come in, right? But then yes. what happens is when everybody comes into the main room, and this is how we did with Biden, where we called all over the country, is that people who are already trained on the system, you send them straight out to a call room. Those people who are new and haven't done it before, after you welcome everybody, we were trying to recreate in the in the virtual world a campaign office so we can get people excited. Once you do they that initial me. thing, then you send them out. Those who need to be trained, you send them out to a training room where after they get the training, then they can start making calls generally under the supervision of a training person until they get comfortable with whatever the system is. And that way you have... Um, you have people who are trainers who that's all they do because the bosses, I mean, like you said, the supervisors or the leaders don't usually get involved in, because they obviously are doing other things during the day. They're keeping up with numbers and having people on the phone and reporting back to the main, the main group and everything else and doing data. And it's the train, oops. And it's the trainers that, um, sorry, somebody called was calling me. It's, um, it's the trainers that you have a, a whole cadre of people who you've trained ahead of time, who then, because there'll be always be, if you're always trying to recruit new people, there's gonna always be somebody coming in to do it who needs to have training. So Tony, can I stop you for a minute? Yeah. Because you just went from third on the draft board to the number one candidate to coordinate and, and, and do this. So I'm going to be ready. <laughs> so, I should have kept uh, my mouth shut. Harry. Just talk your way right into a row. So uh, on the call, Harry. Like, this is exactly and why I'm on the call. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Sunday, guess what? You're going to be that train the trainer, all right? So, yes, and sir. then yes, pick, uh, the other gentleman from the ethnic caucus, you're going to be the train the trainer for that group. So uh, just what you guys just talked about. <laughs> up and uh one thing i do know how to do is delegate and make sure people run with it because you are all capable i'm just here to try to be a conduit for this so thank you very much for your volunteered effort for sunday to be that person. <laughs> and Harry, you know what Harry, the, Harry, the last thing i will say is that i think that the, i think that the hawk has swooped in so i want to say hello to my colleague calvin Hawk. oh calvin <laughs> so calvin is the hey, other calvin. person that will be on sunday uh, and Calvin is has been just there with us. Um, and what I want to say is I bring him in. To, I'm going to let him do some closeouts because one of the unique things about this group of people is it, it, I have never in my life seen where we have prosecutors, uh, state's attorneys, 
legislators and people who understand the value, especially on our democratic side of our returning citizens. And that's really how we got this started because we wanna make sure by December the 7th that those disenfranchised voters are locked in. Uh, and Calvin being an elected official who understands that, just say a few words, Calvin, and uh, then we will close out. And uh, I wanna thank everybody um, in advance. So, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Harry. I just want to say hello to Madam State's Attorney and to all of you who are participating. I listened what I heard. Harry, I just want to say I'm grateful to be a part of this group. There's nothing else I need to say because you all hit on all the points. And thank you, Madam State's Attorney, for your comments. And uh, thank you, Harry. I'm just glad to be a part of this. Um, Christine, do you have anything you need no, that no. I missed? No, I'm great Charles. to say something. Hello. Yes, yeah. who I got? Linda Gray, our yeah. vice chair. Madam Vice Chair, the floor is yours. Hey, everybody. I'm sorry that I was a little late, but I, I got my time mixed up. I was looking for this meeting to be in the evening. So I don't want to go over what has been said previously. But one of the things that I just want to make sure I heard Claudette say that there are things that we're going to be exploring with this. And I, I just want to reiterate what I said in a meeting that we had a few days ago, that if this particular platform that we may be entering, I just want it to be understood that this may be an extra thing that the DC Democratic State Party is getting involved in because we need to take our direct leads from the DNC. So as, as long as we have that understood, and I, I hope I made that clear that I'm, I'm fine with anything that we get involved in as long as it's, it, it's not misunderstood that this is the phone banking because we have to take our lead from the DNC. Right. That's fine. And we, uh, yeah, and I, I appreciate very much, Sister Gray, you, you sharing that. D they have to be intimately involved. There's another entity that is really heavily involved, which is the Demo uh, Democratic Senatorial Campaign yeah, Committee. Great. They're coordinating. So there's a lot of moving parts that we have to have synergy and being linked in lockstep with them. Thank you kindly for those uh, comments, Sister Gray. Yeah. Okay. And I hope that Sister Gray, what I also told you about Brother Russo, he has deep DC roots and he understands the politics of DC. I told you he worked for the Marion Barry's Youth Leadership Institute. Uh, and uh, he's a Woodrow Wilson, soon to be changed named high school graduate. So uh, great. Let's, let's hope that name is changed to Vince Reed. <laughs> Well, you, you fighting with Hilda Mason, so I got it. You got it's a whole lot going on. We're going to leave that for another conversation, right? So uh, uh, I thank you all. Um, Charles, thank you for all. OT, thank you for being there. You got something you want to say before we close out, brother, on behalf of the returning citizens? He's in the car. I always got to keep him up to speed. OT, your, your, your mic yeah, is up. Okay. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah, go Can ahead. Okay, cool. Uh, first of all, I want to say uh, thanks for inviting me to the call again, and um, happy, uh, you know, Turkey Day to everybody. I'm sure everybody's going to have fun with their families, but be safe. I uh, hope there's not too many uh, large groups or whatever, keep the COVID down. But uh, speaking of Turkey Day and returning citizens, where I am today, reason why I'm in this car, I'm actually at the halfway house Dismas Charity here in Atlanta, Georgia. So what we're doing today, me and another gentleman, actually, who was at the camp with uh, Harry and I, James Hunt, um, we'll be passing out turkeys to the guys and, you know, our meals and so forth. For So he's been doing this for like, you know, seven years. I've been a couple of times with him, um, but I'm going to use this opportunity to, you know, spread the word about everything that we're doing. Um, the way I'm looking at this is a long term play. So I want to. My aim is to plant seeds to let guys know, hey, um, yes, you have felonies, you're here at the halfway house, but sometime soon, as soon as you get off of, uh, you know, probation or whatever, you can register to vote, okay? Or if you know anybody out here, in this, you know, your family, friends and family, get them involved. I'm going to, you know, put the message out. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm literally boots on the grounds right here at the halfway house for returning citizens. So I'm, I'm excited about that. And it's, it's just ironic that we had this call at this moment, this day, and I'm here at this halfway house. <laughs> thank you. The other thing I want people to know, uh, I want to thank Ms. Brayboy for also organizing this. And something we all need to be aware of is that we're, we're looking at working with Charles 
Uh, Georgia just had a very interesting scenario happen where the they had five sheriffs that are going to be elected and come in. That would be after the election. But one of the things is we have people who are detained or in holding who have not been sentenced and who have not been um, uh, or, or have not gone to trial and they are eligible to vote. And so one of the things on the last call I want you to know that came up that Ms. Brayboy brought up was the fact that it is much easier for us folks who have lawyers and other folks to go in these places and make sure that those folks who are being disenfranchised are able to vote right now. So just keep that in your hat. There's something else we'll talk about. You can always go to the We Won't Mute Our DC site and you'll see some of the blog things we put on and information. Um, and most importantly, what uh, OT just said was, while these guys are in the halfway house, they can't vote, but they have friends and families who can vote on their behalf and know that this effort is important to them. Uh, as well as in the ethnic community, as you know, uh, Christine always stresses this to me, uh, the fact that in our ethnic communities, we have often been the targets of judicial misconduct, and those are the people who are affected. And so we need to make sure that we uh, include that message in all that we do. Because uh, I think, Charles, correct me if I'm wrong, did you not say that 50,000 votes of disenfranchised people were not counted in the Stacey Abrams vote? And that was one of the factors that weighed in heavy on her losing? Yeah, more than that leading up to that. But uh, in 2018, yes, 50,000 uh, votes were purged from the voters' roll because of this, uh, these arcane, draconian rules and laws that have taken shape since uh, the removal of Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act. Um, and I know I've opened up a can of worms because everybody would want to speak to this, but we're going to try to close out, I guess. And uh, if, if anyone wants to say something briefly, they can, but because uh, I don't want to cut anybody off. But just be mindful. I'm respectful of you guys' time, so go right ahead. Is anybody wants to close or say anything else different? All right. Well, thank you, and you'll get a message from me to uh, launch. Try to have people sign up for that blog on the site because I'll send out the stuff like the training stuff and all that stuff on that. Which, which will capture the new people that I don't have. So thanks. God bless you all. Don't eat too much. You. And you be the turkey on the table tomorrow, all right? <laughs> That's what I'm going to say to all y'all. <laughs> all right. God bless. Thank you. Yeah. Peace, Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.